Hello everyone and welcome back. I guess this is technically a part two of this particular video. Um, this is going to be another chatty one. As you can see I've got all my colors written down from last time. You can also see that uh, I've finished up the repeating pattern from last time. So last time we took a look at this little piece right here. I learned from that video that I should probably have done the center piece um, and then just worked my way outward from there. However, we live, we learn. Um, as I am rather new to this whole videoing thing, um, I'm getting used to my technology, getting used to everything else, and uh, hopefully we will be on our way to doing better in the future. Um, so I'd like to continue from there. Uh, maybe do these little leaves, these little flowers. I don't think I'll do the background just yet. I think from there I'll probably move upwards and see what I can do with these little buildings um, if we choose to go that far. But for right now, um, I think we'll just move forward with these little guys and uh, maybe just do a little bit of chatting and see what happens. Alrighty, so once again we are into our Prisma colors and I have to decide exactly what colors we're going to do for this. Um, I mentioned that I don't use a lot of true green. I also don't use a lot of apple green. So I might pull those colors or one, at least one of those colors into this, uh, into this mess and see what happens. Okay. So there's my apple green there, which is of course PC 912. Um, and I've got, what else don't I use that frequently? And what goes well with apple green? I mean, we could do a sap green light with it. That might look all right, especially with all these other colors and these little colors in here looking like that. Yeah. Yeah, maybe we'll start there. See, my methods are so willy-nilly sometimes. It's unbelievable. I just, you know, I just take a look at things and see what I think is going to look good based on my knowledge of the pencils and, and what I've seen happen before. I don't write any of these things down. I know a lot of the other colorists tend to do that, and maybe I will start doing that at some point, but... I find that it's just a little bit stressful for me to have to write down absolutely everything I do. So I tend not to do that too much. So based on that, this is just still a really simple situation. I just got these little leaves and these little flowers. Um, let me just get my protective sheet. This one will do. In between there. Get myself centered. Get my pencils out of the way. I'm so organized, as you can tell. It's just, it's crazy. <laughs> All right, so let's zoom in a little bit. All right. So I think we'll start with this little guy right here. So we want to use, my apple green is my biggest, or my darkest color at the moment. So I am going to start from the center. and work my way up. I'm trying to keep the pattern somewhat similar to the other ones that I've done. Again, allowing the light pressure to just pull the pigment from one end to the other. Not forcing it, just, just bringing it around. So I guess a lot of this uh, coloring YouTube stuff and getting on social media and all this kind of stuff really came about just a little bit more recently. I mean, I've been coloring and adult coloring for a while. I'm watching other YouTubers um, do this. However, um, I only thought about doing it myself a little bit more recently. And that's because I had a lot of time on my hands um, due to some mental health issues, I was off work for a couple of, uh, couple of months and coloring was one of the therapeutic things that I was able to do. It wasn't a prescribed pair, you know, therapeutic thing. It was just one of those things that I chose to do because I already loved it. And I just decided to really throw myself into it. So I was able to get a lot of coloring done in that time. Now, of course, less so because I'm back to work, at least part-time. Um... And, uh, and so now I have to really focus and try to pick and choose my coloring time as I go based on, you know, what I have the energy for. But I'm really glad to be doing this for you guys because otherwise 
I don't think I'd be starting this page and that's kind of sad because I really like it and I really wanted to do it so it gives me a little bit of courage to know that I kind of have to finish it because I started it with you guys this isn't the most serious page that I'll do. I mean, I'm pretty sure you've seen some of my Kirby Rosanis or Rosane's uh, pages and, uh, you know, some of the mythographics and, you know, whatever else have you. They can be a little bit more serious at times um, just because they're so much more intricate, so much more detailed. Take a little more concentration. Um, these ones, they're so broad and they're so, like, you know, um, easy to work with that, uh, that it's kind of nice to be able to just, uh, just play around with them a little bit. You know, the colors don't have to be hyper realistic. I can just make them bright and fun. I think that's why I like Joanna so much. Her work is just sort of cathartic, nostalgic, um, you know, it's low pressure, which is really nice. So I don't know why I put so much pressure on myself to do so well with her work when I know she doesn't expect me to, do, you know, go crazy with it. All right, so moving on to our second color there, PC120. Um, we're going to see how this goes. It's, it's, it's going to be a really mild difference. Starting darker at the end. And moving my lighter shade into the center to meet. Ooh, a little out of the lines there. Oh well. This is really weird for me because I realized when I started filming that I'm this weirdo that when I'm coloring, I get my face right up close to the paper most of the time. Like my eyes are like two seconds from scraping along the page. <laughs> I don't know why. I have incredible eyesight. Um, I've had laser eye surgery, so I, I, I see very, very well. Um, but for some reason, um, I just like to have my face right up next to the artwork. Um, so having to sit back and get out of the way of the camera has been an interesting uh, experience for me, if we're being honest. So, but yeah, so I'm just giving a bit of medium pressure at the end and then slowly lightening up as I meet with that apple green. It's not a huge um, contrast between the two colors. Probably could have chosen a better color, but I mean, this is nice and subtle, so nothing wrong with that. I guess I should ask for opinions on uh, a few things, you know, obviously I'm learning more about my technology and about editing and about creating these videos. You guys have a lot more experience than me with this kind of stuff. Um, so if you guys have any thoughts, ideas, um, suggestions that you'd be willing to share with me as far as the best editing tools, you know, preferably nothing crazy expensive as I'm getting started up, but something I can maybe grow into as well. Um, and of course, please let me know what it is you'd like to see from me content wise. Are you wanting more of these little mini color alongs? Do you want larger color alongs? More instructive or do you want it to be more visual and just me, you know, being quiet and um, showing you, showing you what I'm doing? So I've got my colorless blender here. I don't need much blending, but I'm just going to give it a little go just to sharpen those colors a little bit. Let's see, it doesn't do much, but it does just bring out the pigment just a little bit. They were already really well blended. But just adding that little bit of blender, I find it helps clean it up just a smidge. Uh, but yeah, so I I, I want to make sure that I'm putting out content that interests you, but also keeps me engaged. You know, I don't want to be doing just what I think everybody else wants because that's when it becomes a chore as opposed to a hobby, which this is supposed to be a hobby. I'm just here, as I mentioned last video, trying to learn and, and, and grow from these uh, experiences, both with you and myself. 
Also, I'm not going to be one of those people that has a extremely frequent upload. Um, when I do film something, I'll probably film it in a few parts and then upload them fairly close together, but I'm not going to have like a every Sunday I'm going to be releasing this type of video. No, no, no. Um, I don't have the energy to keep up a schedule like that. Um, like I said, I live my life a little bit chaotically and that makes me more comfortable doing things at my own pace. So you're going to have to put up with me in that sense. All right, so there's the leaves done. Now we can work on these little bell flowers if we're, uh, if we're feeling up to it. Uh, so I'm thinking, I have to do a little bit of thinking here because we need to figure out, go out a little bit. All right, so the thing I'm thinking about is the rest of the entirety of the picture. So obviously I kind of want to do a day to night theme here. We've got the stars, we've got this little city with all these little plants. So I have to decide how we're going to tie that all in together. Am I going to go cools to warms and then just have like a, a cool night sky? Or are we going to do, you know, this one is nice and bright and this one a little dull. It's hard to say and I tend to, like I said, kind of do these things off the seat of my pants. Um, but for some reason, these little flowers, whenever Joanna colors something like this, I always kind of want to lean towards a purple or a pink. And I think, I think in this case, I'm gonna go pink. I, I feel like that's where I want to be right now. So in that case, I'm going to pull out my magenta PC 930. And maybe go two more shades let's do hot pink 993 and deco pink 1014 pretty standard pink colors pretty boring to be honest with you but they make a really nice smooth um a really lovely smooth sort of uh, gradient if you will so I'm just gonna sharpen up my deco a little bit it's looking a little dull I love to keep my pencils nice and sharp um, you know, it keeps me feeling a little bit focused on the on the mission at hand all right let's zoom back in all right I don't have the best light either suggestions on lights would be good too um, this one I find gets a bit shadowy, so if you want to let me know what you think is going to be a better option for, again, a little bit more budget-friendly, that would be most helpful. Um, I am going to use that sap green light that I was using earlier, the 120, and I'm going to just color in these little stem bulbs. What the heck? I'm going to do them on these ones over here too so I don't forget. Just using hard pressure, just 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 throwing that color in there. There's not a lot of space in there to create any kind of um, shading or anything. I can always put a little dot of white later with gel pen or or whatever. So, all right. So again, our light source is from the bottom. So I want to make the uh, richest color on the top, which is technically the bottom. Also, most flowers do tend to have that richest color coming from the bottom. So in this case, I'm gonna use like a light to medium and just streak it up. I'm not gonna go in circular motions like I normally would because it's such a small, narrow space. I'm just gonna go over it a few times. Guess I could zoom in a little more we wanted. There we go. It makes the page look so dirty, my goodness. This is a really old book though. It's been really well used and abused despite the lack of coloring done in it. Notice I keep turning my pencil as I'm going. It helps to reduce the sharpening you always get that little sharp edge that you've worn off. Moving into my hot pink 993. 
I'm going to do the same thing that I'm going to go right over. Right over the darker color. Helps drag that pigment down. Again, using kind of like almost a medium pressure, not quite. Because you want to get enough pressure that it's going to pull the magenta down into the hot pink. And you want to bring it almost right down to the end, but not quite. If you guys have any questions for me, by the way, that you want me to answer while I'm, you know, doing these videos, I'll be happy to write them down. Just, you know, throw a comment down there. I don't mind answering some personal questions, to be honest with you. I don't have much to hide. <laughs> kind of a personal philosophy of mine to keep it uh, keep it real. So the final color here, the Deco Pink 1014. And I'm just going to use pretty much a hard pressure. And color from the bottom up. I notice too, I'm a weirdo that continually changes how they hold the pencil. You know, some people, they have an exact position they always hold their pencil in. Like some people, it's exactly like, you know, exactly like this. Other people, it's exactly like this. I switch around. Sometimes I even color like this. It just depends on how I'm feeling. Doesn't take much. And I'm using almost entirely an up and down motion with these little guys. So, as always, make sure the end of my blender is not too green. Good. And then again, using up and down motions just carefully making sure that those pigments are clean and well blended. And there we have it. Those cute little bell drops or whatever you want to call them as far as uh, flowers go pretty much finished off. I know this was a really short little one, but I just kind of wanted to finish off um, this bottom section before we get into the top section. It's a little more complex. You know, seeing as it's got all these buildings, the stars, um, and then we're gonna have to get into backgrounds. It's a whole ordeal. So I wanted to kind of finish off, you know, this bottom section, get it out of the way, the simple part. And then we can get into something a little bit more complicated next time, maybe if you guys are enjoying watching this. So if you guys want to keep seeing more of this page be done, let me know. Um, if not, let me know too, and then I can move on to something else. But for right now, I just wanted to say thanks for watching, and hopefully we'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.